Uh, I'm very good. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. We're getting everybody in. That's brilliant to see. Just the little button here. It's the attendance. Useful. All right. Okay. So we're going to get ourselves underway. And we'll do the jump into the sharing of the screen. And now I posted the link to the Nearpod lesson. So that should be in the classroom as well. It is L-N-G-W-R. L-N-G-W-R is the code that we need for our Nearpod lesson. We're continuing on looking at elasticity. And we're going to be thinking a little bit more at this point about the impact of elasticity on our market model, okay, and the application of it, so why we might use it, and some other rather quirky things that relate to a different part of this topic called revenue and how elasticity might affect revenue. All right, so let's move on. Let's see how we're getting there. We've got everybody just about. All right, so if everybody can join in. Be good. Okay, so we had a wee discussion about elasticity the other day, and we talked about particular products, pineapples, tobacco, overseas holidays, and textbooks. Did we do that one? I have a memory of doing that one. All right. Okay. Now, why... We might use elasticity. So now we're starting to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the concept itself and the application of it. So things we need to be able to do, right? Use the formula, okay? Work out the actual price elasticity of demand of a specific product. So we can be given a product and we have to work out its price elasticity. We're going to need to draw a revenue box. We're going to have more on that in a minute. And we're going to need to explain why PEDs, why price elasticity of demand, are useful. What, what's the point of them? What, how do they get used? So key concepts that get added to your glossary. We've obviously already had elasticity and elastic, elastic, unitary, uh, total revenue in that context as well. So we're thinking about the who cares aspect of elasticity. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have a look. Here we go. First one says... If the price is reduced by 10% and the quantity demanded rises by 20%, what is its PED? So remember, the queen is higher than the princess, so that would work out to be 20 divided by 10. And we end up with 2 as the answer. So what does that mean? That means the quantity demanded will change, in this case, increase, right, at twice the rate of the price change. So we see that because it's 10% and 20%. So this is increasing at twice the rate as that. So that's a more than proportional change, a much bigger than proportional change. So in other words, a 1% fall in price leads to a 2% increase in the quantity demanded, just doing the maths on, on the difference there. So therefore, what we could say, what we tell the examiner is that PED, the coefficient for PED for this particular product, is telling us that that demand for it is elastic. It is an elastic or more than responsive or more than proportional response. Now, this framework here is how you can explain right, the actual nature of the elasticity. Okay. So using these ideas is how you will fully explain what is happening, what is going on with elasticity, right, with PED. So here's a second example. If the original demand is $5 and the original quantity demanded is 100 units, the price increases by $1, so it now goes up to $6, and the demand, the quantity demanded, decreases by 10 units. So now, instead of it being percentages, you might be given it in actual numbers. So you then have to work out the percentages. So in this case, the price is actually increased by 20%, because that's 1 in 5, 20%. 
and the quantity demanded has increased by 10%, right? Because it's gone from, sorry, decreased. So it's 100 down by 10. So 10 is a percentage of 100 is 10, 10%. So therefore, again, let's have a look at the PED if you add them up, right? So we are here. Uh, 10% divided by 20%, okay? So in this particular case, you have, again, the queen higher than the princess, quantity demanded, the percentage change of quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price. So 10 over 20, if we break that down as a fraction, it becomes half or 0 0.5. So what does that mean? What type of elasticity is this if it is 0 0.5? Uh, All right, so I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And what I'd like you to do is to try and figure out what does a PED calculation of 0 0.5 mean? What type of elasticity would it be? Ready? 30 seconds from now. All right, okay. So volunteer, who's going to tell me what does a PED coefficient of 0 0.5 mean? Let's pick on someone. Uh, Abu, just because you're uh, a bit. It would mean it's um, irresponsive or inelastic. Yeah, so it's not as responsive to the change. So therefore it is more inelastic well done right because it only changed by 10 percent whereas the price changed so the quantity demanded only changed by 10 percent but the price changed by 20 percent right so it is decreased yes but it is decreased by half the amount right that the price change was okay so in every oops sorry siri asking me a question all right, so it's decreased only by half the amount. All right, so therefore, yes, as correctly said, it is more inelastic. All right, it's not perfectly inelastic, but it is definitely more inelastic. And again, the format is what we're after. We're after how you explain what's happening. So here's the next bit. All right, we're wanting to make sure that we understand that elasticities are important. We need to be able to draw a revenue box and figure out how elasticities and revenues are actually going to be related to each other. All right. Why is PED important for a firm? So let's introduce this idea of revenue. All right. Revenue is the amount you earn from sales. All right. That's the term we use, the word we use, um, to explain what businesses are going to earn when they sell a product. Okay. Now, revenue is different from costs, okay? And revenue is also different from profit. So we have to be careful about that. So why is PED therefore important for a firm? Because the PED is going to help your business, your firm, to make a pricing decision. It's going to help them figure out what price to charge for this particular product. Right? It will help the business to understand what happens to the total amount of their revenues, the total amount that they earn from sales if the price changes. So therefore, we need to be able to work out, excuse me, work out, calculate total revenue, the amount that we earn in total from sales. So the formula for that is going to be the price that is charged for the product. So we say price per unit, okay, multiplied by the quantity that we sold. That we've sold so p times q is total revenue so a little we like code if you will for how to remember the formula tr equals p times q done so you work out how much they're earning from a business by working out how much they're selling multiplied by the price that you pay now you can look these sorts of things up online by the way you can find out the revenue that apple earns from the sales of its iphones because right? they tell you how many they've sold, you know how the price is, and it will tell you how much the revenue is. Right? 
So that we need in our notes and in our glossaries, the idea of revenue being the amount that you earn from sales and the calculation that you have here, all right? But also why, why we need it is to help us figure out what's gonna to happen to revenue if we change our prices. Because remember, TR equals P times Q. So if we start changing our price, it's going to have an effect on the quantity demanded. So therefore, it's going to have a, an effect on our total revenue. So if this is a big increase in price, but only a small change in quantity demanded, it's going to have a different effect on total revenue if it's a small change in price, but a big change in quantity demanded. And hopefully we'll see something illustrated along those lines soon. But first, fill in the gaps. Good work, Lee Sean. Well done, Emma. Fantastic. Go on, team. Abu. See the rest of you in there. Good work, Kane. And I had you for Aki. I used to have come and give uh, ice cream and then you fish. والله يا مرة ما فيش داعي لأي حاجة من من الطردام من عندك بيكون في مساحة للأكل والله سميتك يا مرة والله أي حاجة صدق يعني مثلا لو بالعكس أنا لما نسوي داية تعرفك alright so Brandon have a go Tisha don't know if you you hear? Yeah, I just finished the what I call the uh, word thingy. Uh. Jackie. I don't know why this doesn't. It should automatically sync. Okay. PED is important for a business because PED helps firms to make pricing decisions. N having a knowledge of elasticity, in particular PED, price elasticity of demand, is going to help the firms to figure out what price to set the goods and services that they sell. They understand what's going to happen to total revenue if the price changes. So therefore it gives them more of an incentive, more of a way to figure out what price they should be charging. Total revenue as a calculation is going to be the price per unit multiplied by the quantity. What is a revenue box? How do we draw one? I think I've got, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, draw a revenue box, illustrate the area on a market model that represents total revenue earned by a firm. Now, this is going to be a bit tricky. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back one. Boop. 
All right, don't panic too much because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here and then I'm going to go to here and then I'm going to go to here. I'm going to open a jam. Here it comes. All right, now this will be a link for you. It will appear in the chat section. Hopefully, yes, there it is. So if you are to click on the chat link, the link in the chat section, then this Jamboard will appear. Uh, it's just like a mini whiteboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of drawing um, as best I can on the, on, the, on the screen. All right. So you might look a little bit backwards. You. All right. So let's imagine in our imagining this in our imagining this, that we have a market. So there's demand, Whoop. there's supply, all right, there's price, vertical axis. Hey, Brandon, good of you to join us. All right, quantity there. Now, so here's our equilibrium price here. So if we draw a dotted line here, and all the way down, Yeah. All right, there's price at equilibrium, quantity at equilibrium. Now, if we had to work out total revenue, the amount of revenue that our firm, our business has earned, I wonder if I can change the pen color, what do you think? Oh, I can, how about that? Fancy, I uh, haven't tried that before. Okay, then we need to multiply the price, remember total revenue, price, times quantity sold. Well, that's the price there. And this is the quantity that we're selling. So therefore, if we multiply that, and you guys are much better at maths than I, working out the area of a geometric shape. Okay, so all of this in here is the revenue that the firm can earn. All right, so if I grab a sticky note, and I go TR equals... Uh, with the times button, times Q. I'm going to make it green. All right, and then I'm going to move that over there. So that area that's shaded is the amount of the total revenue that's earned. So if I was to do something like, change the color of the pen again. I was to figure out a new equilibrium. Then the price would have gone up. E1. And I dropped the dime down here. Well, as we expect from the law of demand. The quantity would decrease. So what's happened to revenue? Well, let's change the color. And we see the revenue now is this new price times the new quantity. So it's the equal to the area of this rectangle, E1 times Q1. So I could even do a new box here, sticky box. TR1 equals E1 times E1. Did I do that in green? I I did. Oh, okay, doesn't matter. Oh, I, can, I can edit it. Edit it. I'm going to change the color to pink. Maybe that stands out a bit better. Right, so what we have done when we have mapped revenue okay, so we've worked out the price that the products have been sold, multiplied it by the quantity to create this area in here and then this area here we're creating what's called a revenue box I know it's not a particularly fancy term but believe it or not that is what they're called it's called a revenue box. And 
what we see is that the shape of the demand curve, the slope, the elasticity of the demand curve is actually going to have an influence. So if I was to change the color again and change the slope of the demand curve, so if I make it more inelastic, here, now I've got a whole lot of things that are in the way. All right, if I make it more inelastic, what we see is that now the prices are different. So here's the new price here. All right, here's the price. And the quantity, but the quantity is barely changed because it's inelastic. So because the quantity is barely changed, but the price has risen, we're seeing a bigger, if I change the color again, I know I've got a lot of colors over the top of everything, and I apologize. All right. That is the new revenue box. And that revenue box is actually bigger, as you can see, hopefully. Yeah. Outward. Get rid of that outward bit. That revenue box is bigger than the other two revenue boxes. And the reason why it's bigger is because this curve is more inelastic. So if a curve is elastic, that revenue box is going to be smaller. If the curve is inelastic, it's going to be bigger. Right? If we are increasing the price. This is quite an important thing. So and it and it makes sense, okay, when you when you consider it. Okay, so if we go back to, to Nearpod again. Uh, so, yes, go. Mr. David, mm -hmm. uh, so if it's a perfectly elastic uh, PED, is that mm -hmm. like the maximum amount of revenue you can get? Uh, yes, you're going to have a revenue box, and it will depend then on the quantity um, as to how big it is, yes. And similarly for any elastic, You've got a fixed quantity, but an infinite price. So your revenues are just all up there. Okay. Um, yeah. And those two extreme cases, it's going to be very difficult to figure out the revenue boxes uh, because the majority of what you're going to be dealing with isn't the extremes, but you will see differences with a more inelastic as opposed to an elastic. And what that means is that firms, businesses, are going to be able to say, well, hold on, our product is more inelastic. So what that means is if we increase our price, yes, we'll see some decrease in quantity, but it won't be as much as it would be, would have decreased if it was elastic. So we're going to gain more revenue from that. All right. Okay. All right. So what I'd like, you've seen my drawing as shocking as it was. I would like you to draw now what a revenue box looks like. Where you go. It will all make sense, hopefully. Well, hopefully dollars, because they want to make dollars. No. You don't have any money. You don't have anywhere near that answer. Yes, yeah, you possibly do some, but I'm not spending 167 million on it. All right, so we're all looking good, team. Well done. All right. If you can shade in the area, all right, illustrating the revenue box, that would be fantastic. All I'm after is just the revenue box. That's all. You don't need to be any more complicated than that. I know mine was quite complicated. 
All right. You just need to just illustrate supply and demand. Where is the revenue box? All right. Just like that. That's all I want you to be able to do. Because if you can work out one revenue box, you should be able to work out two revenue boxes, three revenue boxes. All well done. That's exactly right. That's good. Curve seemed to have disappeared. Yeah, you moved the curve, but that's okay. Um, try and draw the revenue box and color it in. Yeah, that's good. All right, are yeah, having internet problems? Yes, understand. Uh, we're recording the lesson, so hopefully we'll be able to catch those who have missed. All right, good work, Hajna. I like this. is very artistic. Look at that. Uh, okay, so Abu, I'm not sure about your one. It seems to have disappeared again. Uh, Jackie, have a go. Oh, in fact, you've got two, Abu. There's two of you. But yeah, that's exactly right, Abu. So the supply curves has shifted. So you see then in this context a change in the revenue box that way. Hold well on. All right. Okay, about another 30 seconds. We'll see if Jackie can put a drawing in, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Because they're wanting you to buy it. Some so that, hey, hey, hey. You put that in your mouth. Good work, Jackie. Keep going. Almost there. Yeah, just make sure you understand that it's that whole box. Be sure that the whole box, but yes, that's the right idea. Yep, you need a supply and a demand, and then you're going to need to work out the revenue box underneath that, Jackie. All right, we're, we're going to move on, Jackie, very soon. Um, yeah, Lancelot, we're wanting the, yeah, that's the right idea if the price was there. You need to understand that the price is actually here and the quantity is there because it's supply and demand. Um, good. It's difficult to do the drawings on the computer. Right, moving on. Here's the rules. These are the rules. These are the application rules with regards to elasticity and revenue. All right, so on the left, under the purple box, here's what it says. If the demand for a product is elastic, all right, so very responsive, so more, looks more like the letter E, okay? The firm, the business, should, I don't know about must, but should decrease its price 
in order to increase total revenue. So if the product is more elastic, more like the letter E, so very responsive, then the best way for that business to increase its revenue is to decrease its price. However, the yellow box, if the demand for the product is more inelastic, more like the letter I, less responsive, then the best way for the firm to increase their revenue is to increase their price. So the point with this is depending on which type of elasticity you have for your product, in order to increase your revenue, the amount you earn from sales, you're actually going to have two different pricing strategies, two different things that you will do with prices. Elastic, decrease price, inelastic, increase price. And again, we understand this. Intuitively, we see it. All right? If the demand is less responsive, we can see that by increasing their price, their revenues are going to rise. If it's more elastic, more like the letter E, we can see that by decreasing their price, they're going to increase their revenues because that's going to be a bigger change in quantity demanded. So these are the rules that you need to know. This This is the application. This is what's going to get you those between four and six marks dependent. Uh, it can be an actual direct question where they can ask you, or it can be an implied question, right, where you are having illustrating your understanding. Okay. All right, so they're talking about something completely different, but you then say, well, the demand is inelastic, therefore by increasing their price, they're going to see an increase in their total revenue. And it's also going to help you understand some of the business decisions that you see when you go to the supermarket. Okay? Why do they increase the price of these products? Well, the suggestion, if they're increasing the price, then the suggestion is the product is very inelastic. Why are they decreasing the price of this product? Well, the suggestion then is that the demand is very elastic. Dun, dun, dun. So knowledge and understanding of PED is going to help businesses figure out their pricing strategy. If the product is more inelastic, then they're going to want to increase their price, right? Okay, to earn more revenue. So therefore, we say that knowledge of PED helps you as a business to figure out what the impact of price changes is going to be on your revenues. So firms, businesses, are going to be able to discriminate with prices as well, right? Because if they know different groups of people have different elasticities, right? So uh, Coca-Cola might be more inelastic for one person and more elastic for another. So they could potentially, right, they could potentially charge one group more than another, right? Just as with airline seats, you've got the economy class, premium economy class, business class, first class, able to charge different prices based on the elasticity of those particular, well, in this case, types or varieties of seating. It enables businesses to work out how much of their taxes they're going to be able to pass on, give to the consumer. So the government charges the business a tax, and that causes their price to rise. But if they're more inelastic, less quantity change, so they're more likely to pass, be able to pass that tax cost onto you, the consumer. If it's more elastic when the price change goes up, when the price goes up because of the tax, consumers are going to leave. So they're going to have to cover a lot more of that tax. So that's a challenging one, that one. Extra for experts. Here we go. The government can figure out by knowledge of having a knowledge of PD, they can figure out about the level of tax and also what impact that level of tax will have on revenue that they're able to get from taxes. If it's an inelastic good, they know that there's going to be an increase in their tax revenue because consumers are going to buy that product anyway. Woo! Now, that's a lot to understand. That is taking it one further step. Right? That's the big boss battle here 
with regards to your video game of elasticity. All right, I'm going to stop sharing here. Go back to the meet to see you all. Good to see you. Now, go back to here. Push the bell. Right, that. All right, now, uh, here's what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I like you, please, to review these ideas. And remember, it's, it's, it's a developing skill, okay? So, I, Harley, go downstairs, son. Um, so, knowledge and understanding, able to identify, define the key terms, use the terminology, um, real-life examples, useful, okay? Pineapples, cigarettes, textbooks, air travel, all real-life examples understanding and applying it so impact on different groups like businesses with regards to a knowledge of PED okay? that's in the higher level of skill required so it's gradually increasing just with this mini subunit that we've got now luck would have it okay you also have another another elasticity subunit that will come again Right after this one, we're going to do another one. Right, but that one you will find a lot more straightforward than this because this is the first time you've seen el elasticity. The next one will be much more straightforward, and we'll figure out why we're doing that one if we do that one. Okay. However, this is a real crucial one, and it's a favourite for examiners. That application of PED has been a question in past exams again and again and again and again. Right. So it is really useful for you to get a good understanding of it. That being said, also in the new week, I would like to test you on some basic understandings of elasticity. So having a look at a couple of multiple choice questions and maybe an extended response question as well. So I'd like that to happen next week. So reviewing between now and then, having a review of all of the concepts, asking me questions if you're not sure, so that you can do the best you possibly can when I actually ask you, quiz you on that information next week. Hopefully next week we'll be back at school. Otherwise we'll be distancing it then as well. All right, that's all that we're going to do today. So your tasks is to review these concepts. All right, have a think. Maybe if you haven't done the explain to a parent or a friend or a family member uh, about elasticity yet, maybe have a go at that. Otherwise, as we'd say in the land of my birth, he konera, which means goodbye for now. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you, Mr. David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye, Jackie. Bye, Jackie. All right.